This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and this is Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000-year odyssey. So tell me, muse, of that plant of many resources, which wanders far and wide, the ancient plant of food, fuel, fiber, cultivated for millennial. As we venture through 10,000 years, we will explore and discover the plant from which cannabis derives. The many uses of the plant, hemp, cannabis, ashes, cannabis in religion, cannabis in medicine, and cannabis, dear old Uncle Sam. And so our odyssey begins. Today, our odyssey is not long ago and far away. It is right here with us. And to talk about the very beginning of this journey into cannabis in Hawaii, I have asked my dear friend, Scott Foster, to join us because he will tell us all about his business is about managing public opinion. So, ta-da, Scott. Now, aloha, Scott. Aloha, Marcia. Thank you so much for being there. Thank you for being my friend. Thanks for having me on your show. I feel so wealthy, just the wealthiest person in the whole world, to have such wonderful friends. And as everybody knows that watches, I only talk to my friends. I only talk to them. We don't need to talk to other people. Yeah, we only need to talk to them. Now, when I met Scott, it was a rather gloomy time in his life. His wife had cancer. And we were sitting on a bench in, at the beach, and that's how we started talking. And thus, our relationship began. So, and, and he'll, all, he'll tie all this together on why we're talking about Lenny. So again, welcome, Scott. Thank, Thank you. you so much. You. So tell us about Lenny and how that led to this. Lenny, uh, Lynn Ellen Ryan, my uh, wife, uh, I was one of the fortunate people who married their soulmate. And we were best friends and uh, uh, had a brief marriage because we were roommates for several years prior to marrying. And uh, we were going to travel the world together. She was with Northwest Airlines, now Delta. and. Uh, Every, every time she got a little extra money, Lenny was off to see the world somewhere. So we, we uh, my favorite story about Lenny was uh, when she said, uh, Scott, where do you want to go on our honeymoon? And I said, Lenny, I want to go to St. Petersburg. And she said, all the places in the world we could go, and you want to go to Florida? <laughs> And I said, no, no Lenny, Russia. Russia. <laughs> and and she, she loved that because she, she had been to Russia, but she wanted to go back and yes. really do the, the royal thing. Anyway, Lenny was diagnosed just actually weeks after we, are, we officially married uh, with what turned out to be terminal cancer. And uh, we went through the, the whole thing. Uh, I was there to support her in whatever she wanted to do and uh, uh, major surgery, chemo, radiation, uh, uh, atomic uh, splinter, metal splinter implants in the bone oh marrow. Oh my. So, uh, but it metastasized into her bone and it, it was gonna be the worst. Uh, plus, uh, uh, she couldn't eat because she'd had so much removed. Anyway, why I'm telling you all this is the heavy meds that we had, and I mean we had liquid at home, we had liquid Dilaudid, liquid Ativan, uh, uh, started out with, uh, uh, well, just the strongest painkiller drugs you could get. And uh, uh, what we found was that the, those heavy pharmaceuticals took care of the pain, but we could back off on those heavy-duty IV stuff, if she smoked mar medical marijuana, I'm still calling it marijuana, cannabis. Uh, cannabis, yes. Every, every, in this world, uh, since they've changed the law, every place is, it's now cannabis. Uh, that 
that fixed, I'm fond of saying, fixed her head. So the combination, the very careful balance of the pharmaceuticals and the uh, medical marijuana, which uh, the term is titrate, when you self-administer drugs and, and how the drug, uh, uh, how much of the drug you take, that's called titrating. Since Lenny could smoke it and titrate it herself, uh, she had, I'm going to say, a, as, as, as good a death as anyone could possibly have watching uh, basketball on television the day before she went into a coma and passed. And I, I uh, but because I was her caregiver at home, I could keep this balance because uh, I was there, you know, every 10 minutes I was going in and checking on her. And she died. She passed in our apartment in her own bed. So uh, uh, it works. That, and that was the first medical application uh, that I began to really appreciate the, 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 uh, the herb for what it is now. So, so then when did you start this movement to begin the, get into this movement of you, you see that it works, you understand what she was going through and how this helped. So then what happened? Well, uh, kind of a series of coincidences. The, uh, uh, I had met a group of very sophisticated, highly educated people during the AIDS pandemic when I was working on uh, uh, HIV issues, public education. And I worked with uh, Pam Lichty of the drug, Pol which is now uh, head of the Drug right. Policy Forum of Hawaii, a, a very capable advocate, very brilliant woman, uh, uh, very active in the ACLU, uh, helped us, as you know, pass right. medical aid and dying. Uh, and uh, she and I and a group of people passed needle exchange in, the, I think, the late 80s, early 90s. Hawaii was the first state, I believe, in the nation to pass a needle exchange program. Well, why needle exchange? First of all, that was revolutionary. Oh, that yes. That you were going to give clean needles to IV drug users oh, the push for dirty back needles. Was an, oh, the push, pushback was enormous. And, but we were finally able to convince the public and the legislature that that would cut down on in, uh, IV transmission by re people reusing uh, needles right. and passing on hepatitis, AIDS, of course, yes. and all the other horrible diseases that, are, that go through blood products. Mm. So Dr. Donald Topping at the University of Hawaii, who worked with Pam Lichty, created the Drug Policy Forum of Hawaii. Uh, out of nowhere, one morning, Don Toplin called me and said, Scott, what would you think of trying to legalize medical marijuana? And that, that took me back, and, and I thought, well, why not? We did needle exchange. We, you know, we've done some pretty amazing things. And, and, and again, my, people ask me what my business is. On my card, it now says public opinion management, because that's what I really do. I organize, publicize, manage public opinion, and I, I like to thank usually for good stuff. Right. Good stuff. Some people wouldn't say that, but that, that's <laughs> what I feel, and I sleep well at night. So that's how I got involved with it. And it took us two years, and sure enough, we passed the bill. Then it took us another seven years to get it out of the Department of, of Public no. Safety no, into, into, into the Health oh, Department. Yeah. And then, of course, now uh, uh, it's safe to talk about it. Everybody yeah, can talk Everybody about talks it. So, about it. So here we are here with we all are. these wonderful pharmaceuticals and oils and tinctures. And uh, uh, it, is, it is the miracle drug on the face of the planet that is natural. And all we got to do now is get it out of Schedule 1 in the feds so we don't have to deal with, with the feds. Yeah, with, with that little rigid yes. sessions. <laughs> oh, my God, uh, that man. Uh, oh, dear, 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 dear. And you know that his position on medical marijuana or cannabis or weed or whatever you want to call it comes from his very racist background. 
And so if he, because that was how he locked up black people for one ounce of marijuana. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Lock them up, throw them away. And uh, so that's where he comes from. Rather than looking at the possibilities that this might be a good thing, that well, there are cures and there are people being relieved of, of all kinds of pain and children with epilepsy, you know. If one studies the history of the anti-marijuana push, it really uh, it comes from a number of things, but yes, it was racist. William Randolph Hearst yes. was involved with it. Uh, the pharmaceutical industry doesn't like the idea at all of people being able to grow their own medicine in their backyard. Uh, uh, there's a number of things that have contributed to it, but you're absolutely right. But it's these, I'm going to say predominantly white men of that mindset uh, who like to control women, who are the absolute, you know, the religious right, absolutist religious. Hypocrites. Uh, it all goes together yes. and it produces people like Sessions and it, look what, we know what's going on in Washington. Beauregard. Can you believe Sessions' name? <laughs> Beauregard Sessions. Yes. Jeffrey Beauregard now, Sessions. That's not a Southern That name is so Southern, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yes, we have him. Uh, however, I think, now, Hawaii is doing very well in its growth of the medical uh, cannabis. And at the, set, at the festival, well, the cannabis, cannabis festival, there, was, yeah. there were 60 vendors with CBD, 60. I mean, this is just grown like you wouldn't believe. And the, I understand there's about 1,800 new applicants for the card online. Mm -hmm. So we have a really healthy, robust industry growing. Well, remember, a lot of this was going on behind the scenes. Well, that's where I was going with this. There's yeah. still this behind the scenes yeah. going on. Yeah. And that will go on. I mean, that's, we're well, not going to. Until we get it out of Schedule 1 with the Fed. But that's, that's the whole issue with Schedule 1. What do we do? Where, how do we go from here? You're the expert in public opinion. Woo. <laughs> I don't know. It's a new world. Uh, it's public education. It's can just keep on keeping on. It's more people, credible. Look at some of the people that have stepped out now supporting, you know, who's the guy that uh, the right wing Republican that's uh, uh, bought into or has gone to work for a, a medical marijuana firm? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I can't remember his name. Okay. Somebody I'll, prominent up okay, there. Okay, I'll tell you what. Let's take a break. And in that time, Google him and tell me who it is. <laughs> well, we're going to take a break. Okay. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. You can be the greatest. You can be the best. You can be the king come banging on your chest. You can beat the world. You can beat the war. You can talk to that dog banging on his door. You can throw your hands up. You can beat the clock. You can move a mountain. You Don't ニホンゴコミュニティハワイの日本語コミュニティに便利なお助け情報ニュースなどをゲストをお招きしてお届けする番組です。こんにちはハワイ。各週の月曜日2時から、ぜひ皆さん見てください。ポストのクニセユカリ
Scott Foster about Schedule 1. What do we need to do to move from where we are with this robust industry? Even the state is looking at a hemp industry, and yet we're still stuck with this Schedule 1. What do we do? Where do we do? Where do we go from step one, step two, step three? How do we do this? Well, uh, other than getting rid of sessions, but man, being in the public opinion, opinion, public opinion management business, uh, we just have to keep on doing what we're doing, only more so, and that is putting out the good news on things, uh, talking to people. Uh, now that there's, there's real money in it, a lot of people who formerly wouldn't have anything to do with it are all of a sudden very interested in it because there's money in it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, you've got the winners and losers. The pharmaceuticals don't want it, uh, uh, but those of us who believe in, in natural products whenever possible, we want it. Uh, it will come, but... It, one thing that could happen is as states pass medical marijuana bills, they could petition Congress. And uh, uh, there are several people who have been talking about this. If enough states petition Congress to, to make it a states' right issue. Well, it is now a states' right issue for medical. For medical. Medical. Yes. It is a states' but, right. But. Yes, but that doesn't mean that the feds can't still come in and bust them because it's still in the federal Schedule One. That's what's got to change. Now, you mentioned hemp and all the wonderful products that hemp could produce. Well, now they, they've lightened up on that one. And there's a, an online, there's a how many states it is legal. Well, there you have it, you see. The, uh, the uh, knowledge about the value of hemp has gotten out. I've always thought that Hawaii would be such an ideal place for hemp, all the wonderful products. Plus, hemp uh, uh, purifies the soil so, that it's yes. in, and so much of Hawaii's agricultural land is polluted for all the years of pesticides oh. and fertilizers and Lord knows what. Uh, you know, I, I, I hesitate to eat a pineapple from Hawaii anymore. Yes, and now with the, what is that, that worm that crawls around in the lettuce and what have you? Oh, uh, yes. senior moment. Yes. I don't remember. I was at, at Foodland and watching the produce people go through each leaf with a hose, each yeah. leaf. You know, but it, you know, yeah. we Nothing new about that, but, but, but the, uh, you know, that's an infestation. But the plants that have their roots down in the soil and all those chemicals, that takes it right but into I, the very fiber and juice in the plant. So uh, I, I worry about this country uh, and, and our food supply. It, it's not just Hawaii. It, it's all over the nation that we've, we've overused the aquifers. We've polluted the land with all these pesticides. We have nearly three times the American population that, than when I was born using all these resources. I don't think America can feed itself without all these chemicals. That's my fear. Well, you know, it's the same people that gave us copper tone. Bear gave us, Bear gave us aspirin. Bear gave us copper tone. Now they bought Monsanto and round up and round all up that. and all of that stuff uh, except of course I have to tell you about roundup the holicoa in my yard loves 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 roundup <laughs> spray me more you <laughs> cannot believe how it grows with roundup well so many uh, uh, things that we take for granted uh, simply because we've used them for so many years. Uh, 
I, I, I laugh about some of these pharmaceutical ads on television. Uh, you know, there's the smiling, you know, face of the happy user, and oh, I feel so much better, and I it shows her playing with her kids, usually a woman, uh, playing with her kids, or a grandmother playing with, you know, the grandkids, and then very quickly at the end, it tells you, and by the way, if you use this, you're going to drop dead from all the side know, effects, all yes. the side effects, and, and uh, uh, but this is how our food is being advertised now, also, all these, all the buzzwords are corrupted, you know, uh, 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 biodegradable, and all, all, they, they just misuse the English language, and the government, that the FDA, the Food and Drug Administration, that once guarded us from the use of, of misleading language, that seems to have disappeared, too. Well, but they are now, when they retire from Monsanto, they go to work for Food and Drug Administration. Uh -huh. So the same people, they just move from one job to another. Yeah. So, of course, they're going to make sure that their product and, and the billions and billions of dollars that the pharmaceuticals make on opioids, and those are legal, but cannabis is not. Sad but true. And those will kill you. Cannabis will not. Mm -hmm. And we've got an epidemic of cannabis, of opioids. And again, let's, let's get this clear. We've always had this issue. Yes. As long, but once it was in a middle class white neighborhood, all of a sudden it's an epidemic. They haven't paid attention to it before when it was with poor folks. But now, when you've got little towns in Ohio, of all places, and now it's an epidemic, people are paying attention. Well, once they saw the numbers, in in little you know there's a little pharmacy in Terre Haute, Indiana or somewhere that sells you know unknown just incredible quantities of of uh, some of these opioids and you've got to think how can it be they're selling more than a hundred times the population of the of the county they're in oh yeah that was and, West uh, Virginia I think yeah it was. yeah and it's uh, it's simply Doctor Feelgood lives. Mm -hmm. And and uh, I know people right here in Hawaii that uh, uh, get their uh, uh, cannabinoids and uh, can go out and sell them on the street. They get them one day and they're gone the next. And they got you know a few hundred bucks in their pocket. So it, it's it's everywhere and it's certainly in Hawaii. So now let's let's go back and let's say okay we want we know what we need to do. We need what we want is to get rid of Schedule 1. And the definition of Schedule 1, cannabis does not fit the definition of Schedule 1. That's number one. It is not one of those things. And so... It's not a heavy narcotic. No, it's and not. And that's what Schedule 1, one drugs is. are. Are they heavy, so, heavy okay. narcotics? So do we... Um, what do we do? This election coming up? Is that the way we need to go? Do we need to make sure that those people, like Sessions and all those others that are controlling this, do we make sure that they're out of office? Do we uh, start really looking at the Food and Drug Administration? Do we call attention to the pharmaceuticals that are making so much money? on opiates, what, what's, where, do we, where do we go from here? Well, I think it's got to, uh, it's got to start in, in the individual states, as I said earlier. Well, I'm, I'm talking there about right a, here. There's a, uh, I, I haven't checked to see if the bill in the legislature passed or not, that, that your former guest, Dr. Cliff Otto, was trying okay. to pass to do this very thing, and that was to get the state legislature to uh, petition the federal government to something, and that's the part I don't remember okay. is exactly what that bill did, but that was a step one. All right. 
Now, you are the expert in, man in <laughs> this kind of thing. Maybe, How maybe do, not. You know, you, you can do this. I, I have all the faith in the world in you. You can do this. How do you, you need to talk to the legislature. You need to have a conversation with them. Not a bill, a conversation. So they aren't scared. That is, I heard an attorney who was scared. Well, when you bring the federal government, you know, yeah, people are scared. Uh, well, first of all, much like medical aid and dying, uh, until every single member of the House and Senate have a true sense of an issue, a real understanding, uh, it's difficult to make a bill move to change major public policy. So that's, that's where the public education area comes in. And that's got a, that's got, that's community organizing, people in every senatorial, every uh, uh, house district uh, must become involved, at least one in each district, who can organize within the districts to put a little pressure on their particular legislator. Pressure's not really a good word, but to help educate their senator or house member. Especially with states' rights, because they, I talked to several of them and they didn't know that existed. Well, you know, elected officials are not always the well, most highly educated, well, or the most brilliant. They're good people, you know, most but, of them trying we to, have to a, serve. We have an election coming up, so yes, we need we to, do. for those people that are on board with this issue, they need to get busy and get organized. And we are just about out of time, but we have to really talk about getting organized and really making this happen. And so I thank all of you that are with us each week. And we do need to get organized and make this happen. Aloha, and we'll see you next time.